Salute to Hoops, guys. Welcome back. Another day, another video, another day in the hobby, another day closer to the NBA season starting. Cannot wait to see some basketball back on TV again, guys. And I know you guys are excited, too. A little bit, little bit of a different video today. I'm excited about it, though. Um, I know you, everyone likes videos like this, so before we jump into it, you guys can like and subscribe. Uh, as you guys know, if you've been following me, uh, you know that my goal is to reach 150 subs by the end of the year. We have one month to do it, so I'm hoping we can reach that goal. Moving on. So today's video, I'm going to talk about five players uh, that are currently sophomores now. So last year's rookie class. Um, five players that I think we're going to see a lot more of this year as opposed to last year. Um, given that we're going to have an actual NBA season. And there's a lot of movement with the team still going on and trading and whatnot. But assuming things stay the same, uh, these are going to be five players to include one honorable mention that I really believe that we're going to be seeing and hearing a lot of more this year. And hopefully their card prices um, follow suit as far as moving in an upward fashion. So... We're going to go with number one. These are all in no particular order, um, but uh, number one, here we go. Boom. All right, so our first guy, you guys know I'm a Bulls fan. Uh, we're going to start out with Kobe White, and I just had to do it. So uh, last year we got to see strides of Kobe White. He averaged about uh, 13 points per game uh, with three assists. Um but the Bulls were horrible last year. I I really don't think they're going to be a whole lot better this year. But uh, we do have a new front office and a new regime, so I think and a new head coach. So I think that Kobe's going to actually be utilized correctly this year. Last year, Jim Boylan only started him one game the entire season. That was the last season of the, the sorry the last game of the season. Uh, so uh, I know as a Bulls fan, that was super frustrating to see. Um, but we kept on experimenting with guys like uh, Chris Dunn, who's thankfully gone, and Thomas Sadoransky. But I really believe that Billy Donovan is going to be starting Kobe White this year. Uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of him. Uh, he only played 25 minutes per game last year, uh, and that's probably going to bump up at least uh, 10 to 12 more minutes this year, I would imagine, uh, given that uh, he proved that he's kind of ready to start last year. So... That's the first uh, player we're going to go through as far as who I think we're going to be seeing and hearing a lot more of. And moving on to number two. All right, guys, you saw it on the screen. Number two, we're going to be talking about this man right here, Darius Baisley. Definitely an exciting prospect in Darius Baisley. Super versatile. Uh, can play both ends of the floor and is... Like I said, just an intriguing prospect all around. Six foot seven, can play both the small forward and power forward positions, can put the ball on the floor. Like I said, does a little bit of everything. So currently sitting at uh, second uh, second string small forward behind Trevor Reza, according to their depth chart currently. And uh, yeah, Trevor Reza, I mean, the, the guy is really on the back of his end of his career at this point, and you would think that the Thunder would want to start getting their, their younger guys some more reps. They got a super young team uh, with Shai Gil Gilgis Alexander being their point guard of the future and really the point guard of now as he's really really shown that he definitely belongs in the league. So uh, are the Thunder winning a championship anytime soon? Probably not, but they're kind of in this like new era of uh, Thunder basketball. So definitely have a really good team. Like I said, they have Shai Gil Gilgis Alexander running the point, and then the Lugans Dort guy, uh, which showed some definite uh, promise in the bubble, that's for sure, at their uh, shooting guard position. So they're small forward. Like I said, they have uh, Trevor Reza starting. Uh, Trevor Reza really used to be known for his defense, and you don't really hear much of, of Trevor Reza much anymore because he's really on the back end of his career, like I said. So. Uh, just basing it off of that, I really think that we're going to see more of Darius Baisley this coming year. We only saw 18 minutes per game last year of him, so he didn't really get 
too much time on the court at all, really. Um, shot 39% from the field and uh, around 35% from the three-point line. So shooting needs to get a little better, but his percentages are probably based off of just the limited minutes that he did play. So uh, the less shots you take, and if they miss, then the worse your shooting percentage is going to be, obviously. So that being said, uh, granted the fact that uh, he is kind of a still just a kind of a raw more more raw player I should say um, I really believe that uh, if he's been kind of focusing on his game the summer like he should be uh, then we'll be seeing uh, more of him at the small four than we will Trevor Ariza moving on to number three guys right about now let's do it All right, guys, at number three, you already, already saw it on the screen there. We've got Matisse Thibault, uh, the now sophomore, I guess we can call him, uh, out of uh, Philadelphia. So uh, Matisse is, is kind of similar to Darius Baisley in a sense that we didn't really see much of him last year as far as being on the court goes. He only averaged around 20 minutes per game on the, the uh, Philadelphia team. Uh, however, uh, he shot uh, 35% from the three-point line when he was in the game. Uh, and uh, I believe it was like 46% from the field. So, I mean, Matisse can definitely shoot. Uh, he put, can put the ball on the floor and play some defense. So, I mean, those are all attributes in today's, in today's game that will kind of put a player um, on the map and kind of keep them in the game. So he's definitely a modern player for sure. Uh, he currently sits second, just like uh, Darius does. Uh, he sits second on the uh, Sixers depth chart at small forward, uh, right behind uh, Danny Green, who recently chose to sign with them. As we all know, uh, Danny Green is also at the tail end of his career as well. And, I mean, I just can't see the, the Sixers coaching staff really uh, – playing Danny Green at least for the majority of minutes at small forward. Uh, he's not the Danny Green that he once was, that's for sure. The uh, San Antonio Spurs, Danny Green, even though he did uh, choke in the playoffs uh, that one year, but we won't talk about that anyway. And he really didn't attribute much to the Lakers run either, to be honest with you. So um, with the way the Sixers are built, they're a super young team. Uh, Danny Green would definitely be the oldest guy in the starting lineup for sure. I believe he's in like his uh, early 30s, maybe 32 or 33 years old, uh, and would be running out there with guys like Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid and Tobias Harris. So I really believe if Matisse Thibault worked on his game like he said he was this summer, I follow him on like Instagram and stuff, uh, then that, and he shows that improvement that we could really see a lot more of him uh, maybe not starting out, but maybe in like uh, mid-season. Uh, that's just kind of my guess. So, uh, yeah, Matisse Thibault at uh, number three there, guys. All right, guys, number four on the list. You already saw it. We're going to be talking about this man right here, R.J. Barrett. Now, I, I really like R.J. Barrett. Like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of his. Um Averaged probably the most, uh, except for like Zion and John Morant and maybe even Cam Reddish, I'm not too sure. Um, in last year's rookie class, he might have been one of the, the top rookies to as far as minutes minutes per game go. Uh, we all know he plays for the Knicks. Uh, unfortunately, the Knicks are the Knicks and they, well, they're really not good, unfortunately. So uh, he did average 30 minutes per game last year, though, shot... Um, not too good from the field, though. 40% from the field and only 32% from the three-point line. So um, he really needs to kind of improve on that. He did average 14 points per game. However, um, I guess my fear and that probably any fear of, like, any investor would be that he was only good because he was on a bad team. Uh, so that's probably, like, one of the... What, I don't want to say a red flag, maybe like a yellow flag. 
Um, but I really think that R.J. Barrett has what it takes to, to kind of at least be a factor in the league. But if he is going to, he's definitely going to have to get his shooting percentages up. However, uh, I think as long as he's on the Knicks, uh, we're going to be hearing about R.J. Barrett to be on, or regardless because they're just – they really don't have anyone else to score for them other than him and uh, Mitchell Robinson unless they, I, I guess, make a decent trade um, at, at some point in the season. Um, but I, I do believe that we're going to be hearing a lot more about R.J. Barrett. Uh, I don't think the Knicks are really going to be too good of a team next year either, or this coming season, I should say. But I really believe that uh, R.J. Barrett is going to be at least a little bit somewhat improved uh, this coming season. And hopefully that that correlates with a stock rise in his card prices. So we're going to be moving on to number five, guys. And then we'll have the one honorable mention as well. So let's get to it. All right, guys, number five, as you saw, we're going to be talking about Eric Pichel. Power forward for the Golden State Warriors here. Um... So the Warriors are in a, like a super awkward position. We all know Clay Thompson is going to be out for the season again this year. Um, so I the the it's safe to say that the run for the Warriors being like uh, the dynasty is is pretty much over. So uh, last year Eric played a solid amount of minutes as far as um, his status goes. I mean he played twenty seven minutes per game as a rookie, uh, but. Also, you have to take into account that, I mean, the team was riddled with injuries, so he was gonna he was kind of getting put in every which which position that he could that he could play. Um, he is listed right now as being backup, so second string to Draymond Green at the power forward position, I believe. Uh, so I uh, shared uh, minutes with Draymond last year. Um, Draymond Green is he's thirty years old already, so he's kind of on the tail end of his career. It kind of shows through his play. He's definitely not the Draymond Green of those uh, of yesteryear with those Warriors dynasties. So Eric, I believe, in my opinion, is going to be kind of ushered in. And, I mean, it'd be smart for the Warriors to do so because, I mean, let's face it, they're not going to really pose any threat to winning a championship uh, unless they make some major moves. Uh, but last year he averaged almost 14 points per game and shot 49% from the field. So he can definitely shoot. Uh, and ironically, he's the same height as Draymond Green. So I think that uh, last year he probably learned a lot from Draymond as that veteran presence. And in my opinion, this year would probably be primed to start playing more minutes than Draymond. Uh, as Draymond is really declining as far as his play goes. So... Uh, just another reason why I think that Eric will be, will be seeing a lot more of Eric uh, next year. And hopefully, uh, with any of these other guys, his card price is trying to start going up. So, yeah, Eric Pichel, number five. Moving on to the, the last one, number six, which is going to be our um, runner-up on this list. So, let's get to it. All right, guys, our final guy right here, as you saw on the screen, runner-up is going to be this man right here, Talon Horton Tucker, shooting guard, Los Angeles Lakers. I know this is probably super random, and that's why this is a runner-up. <laughs> so uh, we didn't really see much of anything from Talon Horton Tucker last year. Uh, he's kind of buried on the end of the bench, played a lot, mo played more so in the G League than anything. Um, but did make uh, six appearances for the Lakers, like the actual Lakers, not their G League affiliate. Uh, started one game, and in those six games, he averaged five points per game, uh, which is not too bad. Shot 46% from the field, 30% from the three-point line, which is okay. I mean, it's not too bad at all. Um, the good thing for Talon is that the Lakers have made some moves uh, Danny Green is gone, and he is now number two on the depth chart uh, for that Lakers second squad with like um, uh, Dennis Schrader and all them. So we're gonna definitely be seeing a lot more of Talon Horton Tucker 
it's just a matter of whether he can kind of get acclimated to the NBA game. Now, uh, I've seen some footage on him. The guy can definitely play and is a pretty solid player. So uh, with being only 19 years old, uh, he has definitely time to grow in the league. And playing with a guy like LeBron James always helps the cause. So that is why we're making Talon Horton Tucker our runner-up for uh, players that we are going to be hopefully hearing a lot more of next season. Boom. And that concludes it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is a different video than all the other ones. Um, but I really wanted to get this video out prior to the NBA season starting. So... If you guys uh, agree with me on any of these players, feel free to comment. Or you can hit me up on Instagram as well. It's always down here at Salute to Hoops. Um, so, yeah. Uh, hopefully I can get a couple more of the videos like this out where we're talking true basketball and investing in and so on and so forth. So, uh, really appreciate you guys for the support. And I appreciate you guys watching. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.